Hello everyone and welcome to Handcraft Your Life, where I show you how to take your crafted projects and use them in your everyday life. So today I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous harvest bouquet. And believe it or not, every single one of these flowers, these fruits, vegetables, whatever's in this bouquet was made from paper. And we have tutorials for every one of these, which there are links below. So let's get started. This is a bouquet that I'm going to use as my centerpiece for my Thanksgiving table. And I had a very specific color palette that I wanted to work with. So let me show you the flowers that I've picked for this. I'm starting with my focal flower, which is these gorgeous dahlias. And we call these the Rip City dahlias. They're made out of our deep burgundy paper. And there's a lot of leaves that go with it. And I'm gonna use every single piece of all of this. And then the secondary flower that I'm using are actually these little pink ranunculus. And these are left over from another project. Of course, we have all the links for each one of these below so that you can have a video or a tutorial on how to make each one of these. So the pink ranunculus, I wanted that pink in there and that works perfectly for that. Another flower that is a bit of a focal point, although it's green, so it doesn't quite show quite as much, are these gorgeous artichokes. Now, they're actually our flowers. These are the flowers of the artichoke plant that we eat. And these also, we have the tutorial for these. Now, the one thing that I did different here is I just added a stem, and that simply was by poking the wire right through the base of the artichoke. And once you're done with this bouquet, you can pull them back off again and use them in a bowl if you want to. So I have five artichokes. Then I have pulled together all of this paper wheat and then the paper bunny tails. And there's a little bit more prep I need to do for these. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a minute. Then I have my little acorns and these are accent pieces that I'm gonna add throughout. And we have some olive branches here. These are all also made from crepe paper. For these acorns, in order to use them, I've placed a wire right through the base or through the top or even through the sides so that I have some variety of how they'll be sitting in my bouquet. And I just do this simply by poking a hole through the crepe paper gently and adding that wire. And I did not glue these because I want to remove them once I'm done. So this will be work just fine for the bouquet. I'm adding in these eucalyptus branches and these are so beautiful because they add the length that we're gonna need to each side of the bouquet. And then we have our paper figs. And these again will just be accented in. I think adding the food into the flower is such a beautiful way to do a fall bouquet. So to prepare the paper figs, I did exactly what I did with the acorns and the artichokes, where I just placed a wire, you know, right between one of the creases of the paper so that I could get something to hold them into the bouquet. All of the wires that I'm using for this bouquet are the 18 gauge because I want that thick, heavy wire. And the last thing that I'm adding in are these yellow spider mums. And I just wanted that bit of saffron color in the bouquet to really bring it together and give it that fall flavor. So I have seven of these. I've also pulled out just a few stems. I only have four of these. And these are from the chandelier that will be over the top. Now these are actually olive branch shapes. And again, we have the link below and I've just glued them right to the stem. So let me show you how I'm going to prepare the wheat and the bunny tail. So the wheat and the bunny tail, they are both on a really fine wire. I'll start with the bunny tail. They are on like a 24 gauge white wire. And when I try to place that into our foam, it, it just, it will bend. It just won't, you know, go through the foam. It's too stiff for these. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull these apart and I'm going to gather three to five. I like things in odd numbers, bunny tail, and I'll arrange them so they're not all at the same level. Maybe sort of stagger them like this. And I'll add a heavy wire just at the base and then just go ahead and tape that on. Now you're gonna want to make for sure your wire at the bottom is sticking out beyond all of the ends of your other wires because you want that to go right into the foam. So in this case, I'm going to be using this off-white. I don't want the stems to all of a sudden turn green. I wanna keep those white. And then I'm just gonna bundle these up into little bundles of five. And this makes a really hearty stem that will go straight into the foam. 
Also, when I do bouquets, I, I do like to have things clustered, especially small things like this. You don't want to have them smattered throughout. It doesn't, they kind of lose themselves if you do that. And once you bundle them together, you can always spread them out to give them more space. You might want to wait and do that once your bouquet is assembled. And I'm adding the bunny tails because I wanted that little pale pink. And I think that this type of texture is so in style right now. So everything's prepared and now we're ready to make the arrangement. For this arrangement, I'm going to use this basket. I wanted to create sort of a cornucopia feel for this. So I'm using this low basket. You can use a container, a trough, anything you like. I like the lowness of it because I want it to be low on the table that people can see over the bouquet. The next thing I did was place a piece of foam and this is just something that we picked up at the craft store. I've placed the piece of foam in the center. It almost fits, not quite. So I've taken some scrap pieces of crepe paper and that's them around the edges so that it's nice and tight. I've also used the paper to cover the holes on the end because we don't want to see the foam coming through the holes. So once you have everything nice and secure, you might want to bring in some of this moss. I like to add the moss just so you can't see these, you know, edges of the foam. I'm not going to use a lot in the center because we'll have quite a bit of, we have a lot of pieces that we're going to get into this arrangement. So I'm just going to add it right around the edge. Also to remind myself that I really don't want too many stems going into the edge. I want to try and keep my stems in the foam so that they're nice and secure. You can pick this moss up at your craft supply store. They'll have different colors, uh, bags of, you know, different styles of moss. I like this one probably because it has a really natural color to it. It does look a little more spring, but I think it's a nice natural color versus more of a brown moss. Okay, that's ready to go. Now I'm ready to start adding in the greenery. I'm going to add the greenery first on this bouquet because I'm going to create sort of a base at the bottom. So let's move some things around to get some space. And the greenery that I have are the olive branches. I have these eucalyptus. And then I have these leaves from my dahlia flowers. And this is what I'll start with. These are in bundles of three and they're on wires. So I'll very gently slide those into the foam. Now notice this one is on a thinner wire, so it's actually not going in very well. So I'm actually, I'll just bend that until it gets into the position that I want it to be in. The other ones are on thicker wire and you can see why the thicker wire is really important. And I'll just work back and forth and add these leaves to the base just to give it, you know, kind of a nice starting point. I'm just working them around. There's no real method of where I'm placing them. Maybe cluster a few. We will be putting some of the longer stems out on the end. So for the rest of these, I think I'll add them closer to the center. It has a really long wire. So I'm going to let that hang down. Okay. One more leaf that is sort of stranded. I'll just add that. Then I'll go and take these. I have six of them. Two are a little bit different than the others. And for these, I'm going to move this to get some space. To add some length to my bouquet, I'm going to cluster three on each end. And the thing that I love about having these on wires is you can move them around when you need to. I'm trying to make sure that they're at three different lengths. Sometimes this foam is a little stiff. You can get it in there. Once you have it in there, it holds really nicely. I prefer this foam over the aqua foam, which is actually for florists where they add water into the foam for real flowers because it breaks up pretty quickly. This one's stiffer and it will hold a bit longer. Okay, that looks good to me. And we also have olive branches, but I'm gonna add those a little bit later. The next flower that I'll want to add are these beautiful dahlias. Now the dahlias have stems that are longer than I'm going to need, but I don't wanna cut them off because I might wanna use these later. So instead I'm going to bend them. And I have here, let's see, I have five dahlias, so I want to think about how I want to lay them out. This bouquet will look good on all four sides, so we'll want to kind of position the dahlias in a way that's pleasing to the eye. You're really going to have to push these through, but it works once you bend them. I would say that something like this, we're going to make sure it's low 
if it's on the edge. So let me see if I can do this. Okay, there. I'm actually, I'm putting it right in the side, pushing it really low. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this side. Again, bend my dahlia stem, and then right on the edge, we're gonna shove it right into that foam. This is a nice place for you to start. So you have kind of this balance going on. Now we have three more. So the thing that I'm gonna do with these three is actually make a triangle. I'll cluster two of these together. So I'll go one, two, and three. And these will sit up a little bit higher. That looks pretty good. And bend this one, this will be lower. It's a little hard to get through when we have this bent. So I wanna make it as sharp as possible. And then the third one, or the fifth one actually, will go right over here. So you can see my composition here. We have kind of two clusters of two and then the one, but they all work together to form somewhat of a triangle. I still have some of these dahlia buds, but I'll add those in just a minute. The next thing I want to add are these artichokes. And I'm going to place these nice and deep so that they really do cover the foam. And you'll just want to position all of these artichokes at different angles and different heights. So I think, let's see, we have these four. Maybe the fifth one needs to go right over here. So there's five artichokes. Now that I can see the basic structure of my bouquet and I'll start filling it in with all the other flowers, I'm gonna go ahead and add some more moss into the center so that nothing shows. If, if, if there are some holes in the bouquet, which you really do wanna have, you don't want it to be so compact that you can't see everything. It all looks really natural. And this green will just give it some greenery flavor. So I'll just tuck the moss around the stems, make sure everything's covered. I'll turn it around the other way. And you can see that looks pretty good. All right, so I'm going to do these pink little ranunculus next. And I have eight of them. And a really good rule of thumb some way that you, that you can you know, use your composition is add your secondary flower right up next to your first one. So kind of cluster each one. So every time you see a burgundy dahlia, you'll see this pink ranunculus as well. So you can start with those five. And I'm, I'm doing different levels. So the ranunculus are actually, sometimes will sit out a little bit further than the dahlia, sometimes they'll be tucked in deeper. It's kind of fun to be doing a bouquet where I can't really see this side, so I'm guessing. So most likely when I turn it around, I'll arrange things a little bit different. And that's the beauty about working with these wire stems is you really can arrange them quite easily. So I'm gonna add another one here, but this one will be a bit deeper. And I think I wanna pop this artichoke out. So I'll pull that out. Maybe, yeah, there we go. That looks good. Let me turn this around. And I have two more ranunculus left, so I'll find some good spots for these. Okay, you can see how I rearranged these dahlia heads just a little bit so I can make this really nice triangle on this side. And then looking on my side, I also have a similar triangle, which then I can bring the dahlia closer so it's less on the end. Okay, so there we go. Now, I think I'm gonna go ahead and add these dahlia stems and I want them to splay off of the end, at least a couple of them, right there with the eucalyptus. Looks like these stems are softer, so I have to be a little bit more gentle putting them in. This is where that 18 gauge wire really comes in handy. There we go. So maybe do a couple of them like that, different heights, and then I'll do the other two on this side. As you're working along making your bouquet and you see, you know, that artichoke is probably not in the best position. Just pull it out and move it. And then I'll position this one. So you can see how those buds just sort of flow with that eucalyptus. This is so pretty. I'm really enjoying this. Okay, then the next thing I'll add are these yellow spider mums. And these I wanna put in pretty deep because I, I want them just for the color pop, more so for you know their texture. They do have a really pretty texture, but I don't need them to be out far. So I'm gonna put them pretty deep in, into the bouquet. And I have seven of these. So I'm looking for holes that could really use just a little bit of extra texture. 
but also kind of trying to keep things in triangular shapes. I'm gonna turn this around just so I can see the other side. I'm gonna cluster two together on this side. That looks good. And then we'll finish it up. We have one left. And I see I could probably put it, I'll cluster it with this one here. So we have two together. So that looks good. All right, then we have the last little bits and pieces and we have these figs that I wanna add. I think I'll, I'll start with the olive branches first and then we'll add the figs. I only have three olive branches, there's not a lot, but this really does go with the theme of my dinner table because we are you know, serving olives. So I think I wanna place these more in the center that you can see them. I'll put this one in first and then I'll turn it around and you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm putting them at an angle so they come out turn that around. So I put it in at an angle, but it comes out towards the table just a little bit. And then on this side, I'll do the same thing. And since I have two on this side, I'm going to cluster them together. And I'll, I'll turn that around and show you how that looks. You can see that. Similar look now. Let's put in the figs since they're larger than the acorns. And again, I'm just gonna look for these little spots that can use just a bit more color and shape. There's two on that side. I'll put one little, and then I'll turn it around and add the last two on this side. And these figs, just like the artichokes, they're just, they're somewhat dark, so they're just peeking out. But I'm telling you, it's all the details that count. Okay, now the acorns. Now these little acorns, I am going to nestle them in pretty tightly. You have to be careful because they do fly off. I'm gonna nestle them in pretty tightly so they almost look like they're, you know, tucked deeply into the bouquet and they're just sort of falling out. I'll show you what I'm doing here. I'll turn this around. Okay, one more on this side and then we'll work to the other side. Now the last things that we have to add in are all these little extra filler pieces. And I like to do that last. I feel like if I put them in too soon, they might get lost. So it just makes sense for me to do them last. So I will start with some wheat. I have here six pieces, so I'm gonna do three on each side. And again, since they do fall, I wanna keep them towards the edge. I don't want them to be too high on my bouquet. And these are really long, so I'm gonna tuck that in, and then I think what I'll do is actually sort of work them down and bend them into the other pieces. Now, so that one went straight. I'll, I'll kind of go to an angle with the other two and I'll slide them in first and then I'll pull them down underneath my flowers because I do want them to be lower than the flowers. So there we are, I'm gonna tuck it in and then pull them down. And then I'll do this right here, except I can't see it. So I'll do it on the other side when I turn it around. Let's see, so tuck it in. You kind of have to grab the base where the heavier wire is. And then just work them down into your bouquet. This one, I think I might try to slide up underneath. I think I can get it there. And that actually turned out really nice. And then I'm gonna turn around and add the, the last two on this side because I can't see quite so well. This is probably my favorite side of the bouquet, the one I'm looking at. So maybe you can set it on the table so that that's what people see when they first walk into the room. But both sides look really pretty. Okay, tuck that in and splay it. I think this wheat just really adds, the wheat and the saffron um, spider mums really add that fall flavor. Okay. The last pieces we have to add in are the pink bunny tail and then I have a few pink um, olive leaves. So let's do the bunny tail first. And I just like to look at the whole bouquet and see where I might need some balance in color and in texture. Again, because these are longer, I will add them first to the ends. I might add some here in the middle in a minute but they're really long, so I need to tuck them in pretty deep. Because I don't, I don't necessarily want to see the stems, I really want to see just the little bunny tails poking out. I'm gonna add two here, just because I think it would 
cluster really nicely. So I'll turn that around so you guys can see this from the front. You can see how I added two. And what I was doing here was I'm bal balancing out this pink ranunculus by having these bunny tails on that side. So there's some here. I do want to add just a bit onto the top. So I think this would be a good spot. I'm putting them at a pretty deep angle because they're so long and I want to uh, push them in deeply. So I'm sliding them at an angle so that I can get more length in tucking them in. So just a bit there. And then I think I'll put another one right here. Again, they're really long, so I need more of an angle. There we go. And make sure I don't lose my fig. So you can see how I've added three onto that side as well. Okay, now I'm having a hard time deciding which is my favorite. They're both really pretty. I have just four of these. I, I probably should have five, but we're just gonna make four work. Uh, maybe I'll cluster two so that it has, you know, more of a three. I'm gonna take these and tuck them really deep. And I want them in the top so that it coordinates. And I'm tucking them deep, really pretty deep, which helps them stand up really nicely. And there you have it. There is a gorgeous bouquet. So here you can see the finished bouquet. It is so beautiful. I could see having this on my harvest table, my Thanksgiving table. And you know, when the seasons change a bit and we're looking more at the Christmas or the winter holidays, I can actually pull some of these pieces out and replace them with something else that does look a little bit more Christmassy. Although, I don't know, this could cover all the way through the end of the year. So make for sure that when you make your holiday bouquets out of paper, that you use hashtag made with Leah so that we can follow along on your creative journey and we can share your projects on our social as well.